In this video, I'm going to tell you about why I don't bother painting eyes anymore. Warning, Uncle Adam is not a professional. He's usually not even very good. Try any and all of Uncle Adam's pro tips at your own risk. Void where prohibited, Uncle Adam is not actually an uncle. Shortly after this video is released, I will receive a haircut and the fez will go back on the shelf. There's a lot of different techniques that you might need to know to paint miniatures. People talk about a lot of different things, dry brushing and edge highlighting and wet blending and all these different things. And I've talked about how some of them, if you're a beginner, you don't need to pay very close attention to. And other ones, if you know, you're an expert, you may or may not even still need to pay very close attention to. It's totally up to you. The great thing about this hobby is if you're happy with the output, that's all that matters. If you had a good time doing it and you're happy with the output, even if you're not ecstatic about the output, you're like pretty happy about the output. This is, this is good. I know I can do better and I look forward to doing better next time. That's really all that actually matters. This isn't so much a technique, although it can be a bit of a technique. It's just more of a process. It's a more of a part of a model that I just generally don't bother with and I'm going to explain why. There's a lot of different reasons, but there's a couple of main ones. What I'm talking about is painting eyes. That is painting tiny, tiny, tiny little irises, painting tiny little whites of the eyes and around the eye uh, on models that are seriously like yay big, right? I mean, that's not, that's hard. That's very difficult to do, obviously. And uh, I get a lot of people who are getting into the hobby and beginners who are saying, I can't, you know, I can't do that. I've tried a couple of times to try to make that, but they always look frankly, kind of crazy, you know, or, or, or just, you know, and, and so I don't want to do that, right? I, I just don't know how to, I, I'm going to ruin my models by not painting their eyes properly. They're all going to look, you know, uh, like their eyes are going different directions or they're going to look like with scary and, and you don't want that. And so the answer then is to just, just don't bother. But you, you can't just decide not to paint certain parts of the model. Well, as it turns out, you can. They're your models. You can decide to not paint certain parts of the models as much as you want. There are an entire group of people out there who don't want to paint the bases ever. They want the bases to stay black, and that's, that's fine. It's not what I like to do. I like to paint stuff on the bases and put little tufts of grass once in a while and skulls, always skulls. But, I, you know, I, you do you, and I'm going to keep doing what I want to do with my models. And so that's why I'm explaining here. Again, this is not to tell you that if you paint eyes on your models, you're wrong or stupid or anything like that. I'm just explaining why I don't do it. And again, if you're newer, then you can take this information and go, okay, maybe that's why I'm not going to do it as well. One of the reasons I don't do it is because it's very, very, very difficult to make it work. Even when the pros do it on the fancy websites, it still sometimes looks a little weird. That's the second reason why I don't do it is because even if it's done well, it looks weird, right? If you looked at a person from a long distance away, which would be to scale about roughly the same as you holding a miniature, even out at arm's length, not even talking about on the table. If you could see the whites of their eyes, that would be very weird, wouldn't it? Like if you could see a person who was, I don't know, let's say you're on the second floor, you're looking down at a person who's, you know, 70 feet away. If you could see the whites of their eyes, they must, must have humongous, humongous eyes. It was Colonel William Prescott at the Battle of Bunker Hill who was famously, uh, you know, uh, quoted as saying, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. And what he was trying to do was conserve ammo. So what he was telling his soldiers was, wait till they get very close, so close that you can see the whites of their eyes and then fire. It's a, you know, uh, ammo conservation thing, which we don't necessarily pay attention to in... Um, the games that we play. But if you think about it, if you can see someone's whites of their eyes, you must be awfully close to them. And if they're very small and it's a scale model thing, it just doesn't work for me. I don't care how nice it looks. It just never works. Now, here are some situations in which it works. Uh, if it's like a Skaven, right? And they have the little red beady eyes and you just go in there and you just go tap and you just give them a little red eye right there. That works. It's cartoony a little bit, but it is so small that it still stands out. And even from a distance, you may not see it, but you may catch that glint of color from a distance. And that's fine because what you're talking about, what you're trying to show is to some degree, the reflectiveness 
uh, of the retina on an animal's eyes. If you've ever had your dog or your cat look at you in just the right angle and the light's behind you and they, your eyes are glowing, their eyes are not actually glowing. You're seeing a reflection of the light behind you, right? And so even the Skaven, although every once in a while in a video game or something like that, they actually have glowing eyes. In general, that's not what animals do. So if you want to get in there and they give you the proper sculpt, if there's actually a little bump in there that you can get in there and go boop and just give it a little bit of red, I did that on the Skaven I did recently for Warcry. So in those situations, totally makes sense. If you're painting zombies and you can get at the eye enough and you want them to look just all white, you know what I mean? Like that kind of white dead eye look, great, you can do that. But I'm telling you, you don't need to go in and put in the detail of the irises and the... The irises and the uh, pupils and the whites of the eye and all that kind of stuff because it's not realistic. Now, admittedly, we are painting weird little robot monsters, space people, aliens, giant rats. I get it. Realism is not super important. But if you just go in there and just sort of flood the eye socket with wash, that will take care of the problem. When I'm painting a model's face, the second to last step for me is always to go in there and to kind of just flood the eye sockets, usually with some brown wash. I generally use Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop, but you use whatever kind of brown wash you like. And you just kind of get it in there and sort of flood in the area. Depending on the skin color of your model, maybe if it's some sort of alien or something like that, maybe you throw black wash in there, but you wouldn't go the lighter wash. You would either go dark brown or darker. And what that does is it adds in the shadows. If you're looking at somebody again from a distance and you see them from far away, you're going to just see the shadow of the sun from above, let's say, hitting them and leaving a shadow underneath their eye. That's what you're seeing when you're seeing a person's eye from a long distance. So if you just go in there, throw some wash in there, it will work just fine. And then I said second to last. The last thing that I generally do is then to go through and do a quick highlight across the top of the nose, if they have one, you know, obviously tau don't have noses and there's other you know people out there who don't as well uh, but usually along this top of part if you can get that bottom lip or the chin and then a little bit right here just a little bit of highlight with a tiny little brush kind of boop 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 and done and then then i am done with that face there are steps beforehand you may down throw down some flesh washes you may do a lot of different things but the last two steps for me are always just fill the eye sockets with wash wait for it to dry and then a little highlight kind of like you're uh, trying to protect yourself from sun, you know, with the sunscreen, you put a little here, you little right there, a little bit a little on the forehead, and then you're done. So remember, you don't have to paint anything you don't want to. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. It's your hobby. Have a good time with it. If you want to sit down and paint eyes, knock yourself out. But if you're concerned about it and you're like, I don't think I can do it without making the models look, frankly, deranged, then don't bother. A little bit of wash in the eye sockets, and then go back and get a little bit of highlight. That highlight helps to also make the, the, the wash in the eye sockets kind of look darker by comparison. Do those things, and your faces are going to look, look a lot better, and you'll be able to get them done a little bit quicker.